What's going on everyone? Trust the Buzz here if you're new to the channel. I make Charlotte Hornets content, so if that interests you, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. If you cannot tell by the thumbnail title of this video, or if you've been living under a rock, Kyrie Irving has requested a trade from the Brooklyn Nets. Now, it's not really a surprise as far as we don't really know what the reason is, but just Kyrie Irving just stirring up NBA news is not a surprise, but it is a surprise that he's requesting a trade. It is a surprise that he's requesting a trade with less than, I think, five days until the trade deadline so the Brooklyn Nets are kind of in a tough position and it, it has been reported that Kyrie Irving will honor his contract if the Brooklyn Nets are unable to trade him so that's good to hear I guess for the Brooklyn Nets because when they're healthy they seem to be really good Nicholas Klassen has came a long way but in the event that he is traded especially to a team like the Los Angeles Lakers which is the team everybody's you know mocking him to um, it's just gonna be really interesting to see because the Lakers don't have much to give up that is where the Charlotte Hornets come in. So the Charlotte Hornets should not trade for Kyrie Irving at all. This is not, I've seen people say, oh, you know, imagine a Kyrie Irving LaMelo backcourt. No, I don't want to imagine that because the Charlotte Hornets are in no position to bring in someone like Kyrie Irving. We saw kind of how to handle the Miles Bridges situation. It's just, it's just not the best thing to do. And I know there are two separate scenarios, like for sure, like 100%, two completely different things. Charlotte Hornets are not really good at handling off-court issues, and I wouldn't even say issues, but just anything that they're barely able to handle stuff on the court. So I just wouldn't want someone that has a presence off the court to come to this team, especially to this young team, young impressionable team like that. And they, like as we saw, they couldn't really handle the James Booknight situation well. So it's just these are things that the Charlotte Hornets should not be interested in, but they should be interested in being the third team. So any team, and we're just going to use the Lakers in this video, but any team that is going to trade for Kyrie Irving more than likely is going to need a third team and Mitch Kupchak should do whatever he can to be that third team. There's no reason why he shouldn't want to be that third team. So in this video, I'm just going to mock up a trade. Like I said, we're going to use the Lakers just because that's where everybody's walking to. We might step in and use the Dallas Mavericks. I don't know. All right. So add team one, we're going to be adding the Charlotte Hornets, of course, and then add team two. We're obviously going to add the Brooklyn Nets. Add team three. We're going to do the Los Angeles Lakers because this is the first one we're going to do. Now, there is no report whatsoever that the Charlotte Hornets are actually involved in this. This is just me saying that Mitch Kupchak should be proactive and kind of get into this deal because more than likely they're going to need a third team. So let's do the obvious, of course, Kyrie Irving uh, to the to the Lakers. And then Russell Westbrook would have to go to Charlotte, in my in my opinion. Um, how else are you going to make this deal work? Okay, so then you also have to have someone to take back. So if you're the Brooklyn Nets, you want I would probably I would probably say they would want Kelly Oubre, um, and I would also say they would probably want Mason Plumley. Um, and then the Charlotte Hornets will get draft compensation, which can you do that on here? I don't think you can do draft picks. Actually, I've seen people do draft picks. How do you do draft picks on here? All right, so I don't think you can do draft picks on here. I, I don't I don't know. But anyway, I mean, the players is what matters the most. We can talk about the picks later. But I think that, yeah, so Russell Westwood would go to Charlotte, Kelly Oubre, Mason Plumley. I think it would have to be somebody else too, right? It can't just be Kelly Oubre, Mason Plumley. Uh, maybe... I would maybe say Terry Rozier goes to the Nets as well. Um, so this is what you're looking at. And then, because and this is just because the Brooklyn Nets will be looking to still compete. Um, and they're not looking for draft capital. You got Kevin Durant for another four years. So what you want to do is maximize that time. And it actually works with the uh, Terry Rozier situation because Terry Rozier has another four years. So him and Kevin Durant, I know that's not your ideal pairing. However, you still have Ben Simmons. Nicholas Class has proven to be, you know, an up and coming young, great defensive player. He might win defensive player of the year this year. And then also you got guys like Cam Thomas. I know like once again, these aren't the prettiest names in the world, but I think that it can be done. Also, you have to think about, they will probably get some more players like in the future. Um, so I think that, yeah, I think you would go Terry Rozier, Kelly Oubre, and Mason Plumlee to the Brooklyn Nets. You got Kyrie Irving going to the Lakers, and then you got Russell Westbrook and obviously some picks uh, from the Lakers going to the Charlotte Hornets. So this way, because the, the uh, Los Angeles Lakers don't have much to give up in terms of player value to the Brooklyn Nets. They don't really have much to give up in terms of draft picks, but 
like I said, the Charlotte Hornets have player value that they can give, and then the uh, like Lakers have enough draft picks to trade for what the Charlotte Hornets are giving up because the Charlotte Hornets aren't really giving up much. You're giving up two expiring deals, and then I, I guess Terry Rozier, but it's not like you were asking for that big of a return, and you're not really looking at Russell Westbrook as like a key part in this or a lot of value in this. Not saying he's not valuable to a team, he's just not valuable to the Hornets, and I think the Lakers and Nets would know that, so the Lakers would have to give up something in order for Charlotte to be willing to take on that Russell Westbrook money. Um, so you do this and then try this trade and it worked. Now, like I said, this isn't the best trade in the world, but as you see, Hornets are minus 15 wins. I'll take that this year. Um, and then Brooklyn Nets are plus four and then the Lakers are plus six wins. So I think it works out for everybody. This isn't the best trade in the world by any means, even for like the Lakers like or the Nets, I mean. They could probably find value elsewhere, but like, let's just say this, just for the sake of the video, let's replace the Lakers. Cause we know, is that, is that going to mess it up? Okay. No, it's not. So let's place the Lakers with the Dallas Mavericks. Cause that's been a team that's rumored to be, um, warning Kyrie Irving. And then also it was reported yesterday that like Spencer Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, and I think Davis Bertans all were all of a sudden out or questionable, uh, because you know, it's rumored that, uh, Brooke, the Dallas Mavericks will be trying to trade for Kyrie Irving. So let's see if we can work up a trade here. Now, I think it's a little different with the Dallas Mavericks. They might not need, they don't have draft capital really at all. So they might not even need the Charlotte Hornets. We'll see how we can make this work. Uh, let's just exit out of these. So of course, Kyrie Irving will be going to the Dallas Mavericks. And then you got, I think, I guess Spencer Dinwiddie would go to Brooklyn. Uh, who else would you give up to go to Brooklyn? I mean, I guess Christian Wood would go to Brooklyn as well. Is that enough? I mean, you only have Kyrie for one year. You Any team that trades for Kyrie, you would have to assume that either one, you're the Lakers, and even though we know he's probably going to resign with the Lakers, if you're the Lakers, this could be your chance to win. So it does it really even matter if he resigns? Probably not. Um, not in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I think they can give up Spencer Dewey, Woody, Christian Wood, maybe give up, I guess, like, I know they said Josh Green's not really available. Uh, so maybe, I don't, I don't really know what they would do here. Uh, I, I don't think this is as straightforward. I mean, Christian Wood, Spencer Dinwiddie, that's good, you know, that's some help, but is it enough? I mean, maybe you could throw Kelly Oubre in here. I didn't mean to actually click Kelly Oubre, but maybe you could throw Kelly Oubre in here to the Brooklyn Nets as well. Give him some more wing depth. Uh, and then maybe Mason Plumley can go to, do we want to go Mason Plumley to the Nets or do we want to go to the Mavericks? I think if we could do to the Mavericks, then that would give the Hornets, I wouldn't say. So like that would, I don't know. I think you would just get more. I, I don't think it really even matters. I think these teams get better with Kelly Oubre, Mason Plumlee, but the Hornets, there's nothing for them to get in return for this. Maybe Josh Green. I know they say Josh Green isn't uh, available earlier in the season, but I mean, I can see, I can see them get Josh Green. So you get a young player and then maybe you'll get probably Davis Bertans. I think he's on the last year of his deal, if I'm not mistaken. So that would help out. Uh, I mean, this isn't the prettiest trade. It might not even work. Trade failed. So the Nets are over the luxury tax. So then I think a just trade, you would take out, I guess Kelly Oubre would be the one taking on that. And then, uh, let's see, let's see. You try to trade for this. And then the Dallas Mavericks are over the threshold. Okay, so then, yeah, it, I think in this kind of trade, I think you can, yeah. So it works without the Hornets. However, my consideration would be, is this enough? And, it, and to me, it's not. So I guess you throw in Doran Finney-Smith, but how much does that change? And I know this is like kind of pushing the Charlotte Hornets out, but yeah. So I think specifically for the Lakers, and that's where he's mocked to, I think specifically for the Lakers that you're going to need a third team. Mitch Kupchak should do whatever he can for that third team. And even in this with the Dallas Mavericks, I think a third team needs to be involved. I think it just so happens that the Charlotte Hornets don't quite have exactly what I guess either of these teams would need to be the third team, but I think a third team would be involved in this. I don't see this happening straight up because Spencer Dinwiddie, Christian Wood, Doran Finney-Smith doesn't even work. So then are you really trading Kyrie Irving for Spencer Dinwiddie and Christian Wood? I don't really think so. Uh, Christian Wood doesn't defend. I mean, I know you have Nicholas Claxton, but who, after Nicholas Claxton, that's it. And then there's no wing defenders either. I mean, Ben Simmons maybe, but Ben Simmons has been kind of on and off. 
And Spencer Dinwiddie doesn't provide that, but he does provide the lead guard uh, role. So I don't know. It just depends on what you're looking for if you're the Brooklyn Nets. Uh, so I don't I don't really know. I mean, I know like maybe you can throw in like Jalen McDaniels and something and then mix it up. I don't know. It could be it could be just picks. I don't know how many picks Dallas has, but I know they have some, and it could just be picks going to Charlotte, and, and that could work out just fine too. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Like I said, this video wasn't to say this is what I think will happen. This isn't what I even was thinking like this should happen. It's more so I'm just proving a point that the Charlotte Hornets should try to do whatever they can to be any big deal that might happen at this trade deadline. Charlotte Hornets should try to be that third team. We know that there's always a third team. We know that the teams are always just trying to figure out how can we get this player for without giving up too much assets? Maybe we can bring in another team, give them a little bit of what we got instead of all of it. If you're like the Lakers and you don't want to give up both of those first round picks that you have that are trade eligible, we can give the Charlotte Hornets one pick because it's not like they're giving up that much as far as guys that they actually value and plan to keep and things like that. And in fact, anyone that would take Terry Rozier will be doing the Charlotte Hornets a favor because they're getting him off the books. And then you're giving what's Westbrook whose contract ends at the end of the season anyway. Then you get a first round pick out of it. So if you're the Charlotte Hornets, is you walk away with cap space, a first round pick, and then you just offloaded two guys who really weren't going to be here next year. And then you get rid of Terry Rozier, who uh, has, I think his deal started this year. So he has another four years, I mean, three years after this of just his contract. So that anybody will be doing you a favor and you'll be doing them a favor just by providing a good player like Terry Rozier. So once again, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Like I said, by any means, I know when you do trades, people get really picky. This isn't the perfect trade. It's just a show that the Charlotte Hornets should be involved in some way or another and i think that would really help them going forward so once again i'll see you next time peace